there's going to be times where you're just going to think, Lord, I can't do this. This is too much. You are listening to Saints in the South. Welcome to another episode of Saints in the South, number 46. 46. Hey, do y'all realize? That's right. Do y'all realize that uh, our 50th show will air the week of Christmas? Well, well. So we're going to have to, again, two great events going on at once. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Right. It's, which, which will be more significant in the eyes of the, the American public. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a, <laughs> I don't know, lots of people say it's going to be a barn burner. What? That's right. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> what, what does that mean? Uh, how does that sound? We do in the South. That's what we do in the South. Hey, uh, <laughs> Yeah, y'all be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have a YouTube account. We just we just uh, figured that out. If you don't have a YouTube account, you you can't hit subscribe. Yeah, get but, you uh, get you a, get you a YouTube account, man. Come right. on, come on, man. YouTube it up. That's right. Subscribe. Get that notification bell. Don't that, miss them. Hit that bell. That's right. Uh, new episodes Share every Sunday. Up. That's right. Share it with your friends and family. <clears throat> Hey, and we are recording today, and we're going to keep on recording, okay? Yes, we're going to try to get the whole episode today. So uh, today, today we are in uh, the book of Ether. We're finishing up the book of Ether, chapters 12 through 15. And we're it in is, the short rows now. That's right. Getting, getting close. Another southern phrase. Hey, the, the title of it is, By Faith All Things Are Fulfilled, uh, which is a... An appropriate title, um, I believe uh, chapter 12 of Ether is probably one of the most used chapters when it comes to discussing faith and, yeah. uh, and teaching about its uh, principles and everything. So, um, but just to, just to get us started here, uh, in, the, in the very beginning of, of chapter 12, uh, a man by the name of Coriantumr uh, is king. He's king over the land. And during that time, a man by the name, uh, by the name of Ether, uh, shows up and he is a prophet, prophet of the Lord, and begins prophesying uh, among the people. And in verse verse two, the first thing that I wanted to point out uh, says that for he could not be restrained because of the spirit of the Lord which is in him. And the thing that I took away from that is that I think too often we, when we get promptings from the spirit. We, we restrain ourselves. We're like, I don't know, yeah. I don't, you know, is, is that coming from the Lord or is that, is that my thoughts or just, just plain old fear about, about opening your mouth or, or, or doing something. Um, Definitely. A quick, uh, quick, quick example. I actually gave a talk this past Sunday and shared an experience of, of uh, my wife and uh, long story short, um, my my daughter wears hearing aids, and we've been struggling to find the correct earpiece that would fit for her ear. And after visiting with the audiologist and finding something uh, that worked, but still wasn't exactly what she needed, she she left. And on the way out, she ended up seeing an earpiece and asking about it, but didn't really get anything much of it. She leaves, and then again, and then she's prompted to go back in. And she and she admits I that she tried not to go back in. Um, she she was restraining herself from yeah. following the spirit, but it kept kept eating at her. And so she turned around, goes back in, and those earpieces that she saw were not were not the ones that we needed. But it led to the the perfect earpieces that that right. Lily, Lily needed for her ears and stuff. And so. So don't restrain yourself when it comes to to following the spirit of the Lord. That's a great that's, that's right. a great example, man. And and it made me think of uh, uh, Proverbs three five, um, three five and six. I believe it says, uh, you know, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. In other words, I like that because, like, even with your wife and with Ether, I mean, this was something where they weren't restrained. I mean, you know what I mean? It's, um, they, they were willing to do whatever and go wherever and do whatever they needed to do, even if it was inconvenient or felt weird, or it was kind of like, why would I do that? And, but yet they do it. Um, and you find out that wonderful things happen when you listen to the spirit, the spirit will get you where you need to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's Uh, right. That's pretty pretty uh, awesome. Pretty awesome. Spirit, the, the natural man, yeah. you know, battling there because yeah, there's situations. Uh, I know I've been in situations where I have felt prompted and uh, 
haven't acted and felt terrible afterward because it wasn't yeah. until after the fact that I, I felt really confident that I knew that it was a prompting something I was supposed right. to do. But right. in those moments, you sometimes might feel uh, awkward or weird or like, well, why would I do that? Like, right. why would I walk up to this random person and start talking to him? I don't know them. Like, you know, exactly. you, and exactly. I think you know, we all might struggle with that. I know I do a lot, you know, I have those feelings and then I have to, I have to remind myself of, okay, if I got this weird feeling out of nowhere that I just need to walk up to this random person and say a certain thing, yeah. I should do it. Yeah. Because, you know, and worst case scenario, even if it's not a prompting, even if it didn't come from the Lord, That's right. um, Still if you're going to do thing. something good, if you're doing something, try to do something good for somebody, it's always worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. What were some of the other things that uh, jumped out to y'all? Number four. <laughs> oh yeah four yeah that's definitely first four yeah, yeah I, so that's one that i looked i had marked when i was when i started glancing through i was like oh what yeah you, i already what, had that one highlighted. you got any you got anything on it kenny um, it not specifically no other than the, I, uh, just how it's, it's one of those verses that's just beautiful to me that really uh and, and you, you know there's think, certain verses in scripture that just make you uh, feel all warm and fuzzy and <laughs> yeah i mean verse, and talking verse about four. that hope talking about that hope yeah. in the future you know glorifying god and and okay this it ties back to verse two though um cory answer you know doing the things you know you're standing steadfast always abounding in good works being led to glorify god because just like we were talking about promptings anytime anytime you follow a spiritual prompting anytime you you feel that holy spirit telling you to do something and you do do it you you are glorifying god right right that's What's amazing to me about this verse too also is this is Moroni speaking at this point. This is him talking about hope and faith and, and, and hope for a brighter future. Like you're saying, how he, he, this is Moroni. He's alone right now. He's lost his whole family. Uh, they've been annihilated. They haven't just, it's not like he's moved away for a little while. I mean, his family's gone. There's no one. Um, and yet he speaks to future believers about, having hope and faith and a brighter day, you know, and it's like, wow, you know, and it's like, uh, he couldn't fix his current world, but, but he can at least reach out to the future and say, you know, I, I want to help you to, n to not do this. <laughs> you know, don't, yeah. don't destroy your lives, you know, don't destroy everything. He'd lost everything, but he hadn't lost hope. You know, and I, I think that's one of the coolest things about Moroni well, also think about this. So he's, he's, he's the lone survivor, right? Yes. And at the same time, he's sitting here also having to write and transcribe about another people that yes. come all the way down to a lone survivor again. And so being able to have that hope is, is pretty impressive that he's, he's having to record a history of a people that destroy themselves. Yes. And then he, he has lived uh, that as well. So it's, it's kind of like, man, is there any hope in the world that, I mean, do, do people, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? I think too, it's a, it was a con in two or more witnesses and two more witnesses will know the truth of all things. And here is a solid two witnesses to Moroni that without the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're nothing and you'll be destroyed. I mean, you have nothing. There's no hope. There's no anything. And, and so he saw that with his own civilization. And now he sees that through this ancient civilization, through the, through the, you know, the book of ether. And, uh, and so that's two witnesses to him right there, which is why he's so fired up to say, Hey, look, the, it does not work guys. You right. can't go Good on point. without the Lord and expect to have a wonderful fulfilling life. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You have to have the savior in your life. And so I, th I think it's pretty cool too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of faith in this chapter. That's a, yeah, that yeah, faith. That's what this it's one just, is all about. Yeah, again and again and again and again. So there's, yeah, that's the, definitely, if there's a theme down with chapter 12, it, it's faith. I mean, and, 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 and none of this stuff is, obviously this is from, he's, he is compiling this from, from records of 2000 years, you know, thousands of years ago. This isn't even his time, which to us was a long time ago. This is, you know, 2000 years ago for us now. But anyway, He's saying that uh, that the people, basically, so many marvelous and wonderful things were trying to come to pass to him, and and he did prophesy many things to him. Ether did, but he said in verse five, because they saw them not, they didn't believe it. And this is that ancient, old, you know, seeing is believing mentality. It's not a new thing like we see today. You know, oh, you show me, and I'll believe it. You know, it's this has been going on for thousands of years. You know, this is one of Satan's tactics. You know. 
seeing is believing. And um, so instead of believing is seeing, you know, that's the way we should, when it comes to the gospel, we should, you know, have that faith and that, that, right. uh, you know, vision to be able to believe it without having to actually manifest something, you know, but th- this is just something that's been but when happening. When you have, have that time. faith, you will see it. Exactly. So it's not, it's not. Blind yeah. And it's not like so you're not like going to see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. If you, once you take a little step of faith, you start Sometime, to see things yep. that you never saw before that are right in front of your Absolutely. face. Absolutely. Like, you have to step cow, out. This, yeah. The yep. Lord will show you. Yep. You have to step Was out it? in the darkness. Yeah. And that you'll, was, you'll get what you need. I like how, I like how Moroni, he goes on and he gives several different examples of, of, of faith and people exercising faith and so forth. But the one that I would love some more information on, and maybe I've just missed it, but the fact that the brother of Jared moved the mountain Zaren. So <laughs> yeah. there's, only, there's only one reference to it. That's, uh, that, that, that's the only mention of him moving a mountain, right? So we, we, we don't know the story behind it, right? Right. So I'd like to know a little bit it's more about that. I mean, hey, have you that? ever heard of that mountain before in the, in the Book of Mormon? No. Yeah, it's because it was removed. So, well, here's, here's my thinking. Here's my thinking. Gosh, it, was removed. it was removed. That's why he didn't, that's why nobody ever talked about it later on. It was gone, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, so, so here's my thinking. So they're on their travels, right? They're, they're traveling in the wilderness. Yeah. And right. I think that that mountain was back before they crossed the waters and they're traveling yeah, yeah. and stuff and they come and, and the brother Jerry and the people start complaining. Stuff, and he's like, I'm done climbing mountains. Hey, <clears throat> hey, a mountain, you need to, you need to slide over here. Okay. I mean, we're going straight through. Could be. Hey, yeah. Moses part of the Red Sea. I that, mean, exactly. That's, I mean, that's, uh, that, that's on the it's same. pretty level. intense. That's pretty intense, man. I mean, it, a mountain. It, that shows you right there. You know, Marone, I said, I can't even write a hundredth of, 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 of what, you know, of what's going on here with yeah. the Jaredites. And, and that's just, happens to be one thing that he just throws in there willy-nilly like oh and he That's moved right. the mountain you know and, and it's like my goodness how much stuff did he not write down you know what i'm saying how much stuff do we not have here because that's a pretty big cool thing you know yeah. what i'm saying you know it's funny you know, jesus himself said that you know if you have faith you could move mountains <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah, he said it absolutely but, you know, there you go and apparently <laughs> the brother of jared mahonrai had some some good City faith church. you know yeah. i mean he, he really moved some stuff there that's uh that's pretty awesome though. And, and there's a lot of similarities between Hebrews chapter 11 and Ether chapter 12. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Because of talking about faith, uh, you know, talking about faith, you know, Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Um, Ether 12 reminds us of uh, the examples of Moses, uh, Alma, Amulek, Nephi, Lehi, Ammon, the three Nephites disciples and the brother Jared in Hebrews Paul reminds us of the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses. It's just pretty cool how they do this, you know, and uh, they both uh, are kind of following that similar pattern when they talk about this. They talk about prophets and the faith that they had, and here's Moroni talking about prophets, you know, that he knows, you know, and and it's just pretty cool, you know. Y'all ready to talk about the... Verse twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 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 kind of skim it down. See if there's anything else. Uh. The one, the what I what I was going to uh, point out and kind of give me a second to kind of get through this. So leading leading up to that to those verses, uh, verses twenty-three to twenty-five. So Moroni he he goes on about how weak he is in writing, and he's so concerned about it that the Lord says to him in verse twenty-six, "Fools mock, but they shall mourn." And my grace is sufficient for the meek that they shall that they shall take no advantage of your weakness. And then in verse and then in verse uh, twenty seven, uh, the famous verse, he says, "And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. Then I will make uh, weak things become strong unto them." Now in verse twenty nine, having having heard these words from the Lord, uh, Moroni is comforted. He says, "For I know that thou workest unto the children of men according to their faith." And he's, he's already given a bunch of examples of that. And then he goes on and gives more examples of, of people and uh, prophets exercising faith. And then, um, so I want to ask a, a couple of, couple of questions. So having known this and talking about weakness and the Lord has said, don't worry about that. I will make that become strong. So do you think Moroni has, has learned his lesson? Do you think he's like, okay, all right, I understand. I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm not, not, not going to worry about that anymore. 
Um, or, or do you think he, or do you think he still might struggle with that? And this is, and this is where the scriptures kind of really come alive to, to me. And yeah, I'll, absolutely. And, yeah, and absolutely. I, and, and I, I'll get to where I'm going, but, uh, any, any feedback on that? I, I, you know, Moroni is human, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, so speaking from my own experience, I mean, there are things that I know just as sure as I know that I have this microphone right here pointed at my face, but yet I still maybe, you know, have these moments of doubt or moments of, you know, I think so. So to say that he's completely done with it, I mean, it's a high possibility that he's completely got it now. He's grasped it. But, um, but also, you know, part of me says, you know what, he is human also. Right. And I don't know, but I see what you're saying. I yeah. mean, you know, so, so, so here's, here, here's my answer. And this really is what, again, brings the scriptures alive to me. Verses 39 and 40. Verse 39. And then he says, And then shall ye know that I have seen Jesus, and that he hath talked with me face to face, and that he told me in plain humility, even as a man telleth another in mine own language concerning these things. And then verse 40. And only a few have I written because of my weakness in writing. So there he goes and throws out, Right. That same thing that oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. weak in writing. So yeah. even though he's had these great experiences, he still is is uh, is worried and yeah. self conscious about 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 his writing, yeah. and that just hits home for, for 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 me. Is that even though we may believe something, we believe what we're being taught, you know exercising that faith to yeah, that is, yeah. a, is, a, is a whole nother it's level. Another, that's another level. Yeah. That's so. a, it's actually, it's, it's contingent on that faith still, you know, yep. it's, it's a, because we can, you know, you, you can hear something and feel it to be right and know it to be right. But if you don't continuously exercise that over and apply that it, you can, you know, you can revert right back to where you were easily. Right. And, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, one of the uh, kind of one maybe the easiest example to to give is that the law of tithing, right? You may believe yeah. what everybody's talking about and teaching about the law of tithing, but when it comes down to paying a power bill or paying tithing, right? You know, do you do, do, faith. do, do you have the faith to, to to pay the tithing over the power bill? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. And 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 I know of people that have uh, you know followed tithing to a T in the past. Or they've said that they have in the past, just no problem at all. But then all of a sudden they're struggling with it, and you, it's as it goes back to that whole thing. You got to remember these. You know, you have to have some remembrance. You got to remind yourself, and you know, and it, it, we're you know we we are prone to to revert back to old ways sometimes, and obviously that's the beauty of the atonement. Thank goodness that we oh, have yeah. it, so we can continue to try and continue to strive yeah. and and change and keep moving. So, but. uh I do like that, man. I, that, that is, that's that a really good point. Yeah, that, that, good yeah point. I hadn't even really noticed that. That's little yeah, tiny statement there speaks volumes. You know, you might it really miss does. it. Um, yeah, I've heard, even I've, even somebody you know, great such great faith could uh, right. You know, still, he's still doubting himself, even though the Lord set him straight. I don't. I yeah. told him, look, you don't worry about this. You don't worry about your writing. You you don't. You you gonna you're gonna do what you need to do if you yeah. have faith. And he's like, okay, I got it. And then he's like. Yeah, you know, just a couple of verses a later, it's like, well, you know, I'm, because I'm because <laughs> I'm weak in writing, I really didn't write all these things. I, I don't. I really don't I'm think feeling. if he if he wasn't still struggling with it, he wouldn't have mentioned it. No, right. yeah, that's yeah. A good I mean, point. He, yeah. he had he had to mention it again. I mean, it, it it's a big task, man. And I mean, he's got a he's got a lot on him right now. And plus, he he can't even make any more plates. He can't. So he's got to right. be very picky. Think about how picky you got to be. What you going to put on there and have all right. this cool stuff in front of you. Yeah, that's pretty. That would be tough yeah. to know what to do and all that. But uh, you know, another thing I saw John by the way, by the way uh, give a quote on verse twenty seven. I always thought it was really cool. He said, "This verse is often misquoted as I give unto men weaknesses." Um, you know, and uh, he said, "What's the difference between weakness and weaknesses?" And he goes on to say the other side, which both sides, you know, work. You gain, just like you say, you gain out of each side. But one of the things he thinks that's in the scripture too is that we need to remember is that the overall weakness of us just being human, just like we're yeah. talking about, that uh, that we're also fallen before the Lord. I mean, we 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 are fallen. We are fallen man. You know, we have sin. We that's our weakness overall, the general weakness. And so right. we need Christ to overcome well, another that. You know. Another thing that to me is really significant right there is that the, the one word there, 
He doesn't yeah. say I give unto yeah. men weakness. In general, he says I give unto men their weakness. Yep. Whereas he knows we all have our struggles. Everybody we has all have something. Our struggles. You know, we you know, and yep. and there's you know, people people have things they might struggle with their whole life and yep. it's you know, the Lord knows that, you know, so he knows, you know, we have we have our own individual weakness that might be like some not be not be like somebody else's weakness. And and, but, uh, and the, the thing Lord is, knows that and if we trust in him, yeah, he can, yeah, we can overcome it. That's the that's the key, man. Think about I think of physical therapy. My my brother in law is a physical therapist. And uh, you know, for him, you know, pain pain can be a good thing and it sounds terrible in a in a body because that shows you where the problem is a lot of times. You know, if you feel pain in that joint, that oh, there's something wrong with that joint. It gives you where, oh, now I need to strengthen that part of the body. And and so our weakness or our weaknesses, whatever in our lives, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's great to have tons of weaknesses, <laughs> but what I'm getting to is, is the reason that, you know, the Lord shows us or allows us to see our weaknesses isn't to make us feel bad or to feel down or to, oh my goodness, I'm terrible or, or that it's so that we can go, oh, oh, I noticed that I need to now rely on the savior to strengthen that and to work on that. Um, Absolutely, and, and so it's it's not something just to put us down or to just make us feel bad or feel hurt. It, it's it's um, and I don't mean to speak lightly of it because there are degrees of weaknesses. You know, there's so many different trials and things that we go through. And uh, but what I'm getting to is is the the whole reason that it, it's there and we recognize it is so that we do something about it uh, with the help of the Savior through the atonement. Absolutely, so, man. You know what I just thought of while you were saying that? Have you ever that? seen any documentaries about people who, who feel no pain? Oh, who yes. Who are capable of feeling pain? You know, and Isn't that crazy? Like, they I, often I thought, don't live long. Yeah. Like, most of them don't live past childhood. And it's really, it's crazy that you I just, all of a sudden this light bulb. Well, when I thought hey, about it. When you saying that, I was like, yeah. yeah, that's the same thing. You know, if we're, yes. if we're not aware of our weaknesses, if the Lord doesn't make us aware, if we don't have that spiritual pain in the areas that we're struggling, then we, we won't, won't know what's wrong and we, we won't, won't be able to correct it. Absolutely. Just like, you know, these, these kids that don't feel pain, they might have something, some horrible thing going, like one of their joints just might be grinding and, and they, they don't know you're aware of it until they just collapse and fall. Yeah. And it's already gotten so bad that they, there's no repairing it. You yeah, they, they, they'd have like a complete compound fa- fracture or something in their leg. They had no idea. Oh, yeah. It's That's like, and, or they and could whenever, get burned, you know, they could have a, they could have a horrible burn and not even, yeah, they they don't even they're know behind it. or something like that or not even yeah. aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, the first time I heard of that, I thought, well, that would be awesome. And then once you start hearing the story, you go, dang, that yes. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, it's I got to like, hold that. <laughs> so, you know. One other, uh, one other thought that I had on the weakness part, as it pertains to, to weakness, you know, uh, we've mentioned about weakness of sin and so forth, but, you know, we have weakness and talents as well. And so it helps us, it gives us the opportunity to serve others and to rely right. upon others as well. You know, if, if, if I need, you uh, yeah, you, so, and that, that, I think that also goes into uh, helping us live with each other, rely upon Absolutely. each other, be humble and so forth. So I like that. Good point. Great point there. I want to just mention really quick while, you know, that's what I, I, I love these conversations because they, they're so organic and just, yes. you know, we're bouncing and these are real, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, if, if you're listening to this right now, yeah, these aren't scripted. These are, no, you know, we, we might make some notes not. of some things that stand out to us. We want to talk about, but yeah, it's like, you know, this is like a real life, you know, capturing the moment, bouncing these things off of each other. And, you exactly. know, when you were talking about pain and it, it also made me think of how the Lord doesn't promise to ever, to take away our pain in this life, but he promises right. to give us the strength to get through it. And I think that's, that's really significant too, because it's kind of like, just like the, you know, the, the physical pain, you know, the, like said, children are born without the ability to feel pain. Like if they're having all these problems, I know sometimes as parents, we've all, we've all, you know, we're parents and we've all seen our children in pain at some point and wished we could take away their pain. Right. But the Lord knows that that's not the best thing necessarily. Like it's, it's better to give someone the, the strength and the, the tools they need to, to work through the pain and to, to address it, you know, because like you said, the pain shows us where the problem is. Yep. And uh, just for us in life, you know, we, uh, when we feel pain and we, we have these weaknesses and there, we have struggles and we have trials, the Lord doesn't just 
never says, okay, well, if you have faith in me, I'm going to take away your trials and yeah. everything's going to be peachy keen and hunky dory. No, he does say, if, if you trust in me, I'll, I'll give you the strength to get through these trials and you'll make yeah. it. it. It's still going to be hard. It's still going to be really, really hard. And there's going to be times where you're just going to think, Lord, I can't do this. This is too yeah. much. But you know, that's, that's the promise is uh, not to take it away, but to get through it. Right. I, th- I think we, che- I think we'd be, I think the Lord knows that he would cheat us of so many wonderful things. I mean, we, we sometimes forget and lose track of the fact that this life is, we're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to, you know, it experience. We're here to experience. We're here to have sorrows and have joy. And, um, so I think the Lord knows without a doubt that he would cheat us of so many great and wonderful things. If he just took us out of every bad situation, I mean, you know, take the pain from us, take us out of the situation, take it. There's so many wonderful things that we gain. And you think to yourself, yeah, but it's terrible that he would leave you there, this and that. But with eternal perspective, this is not where we stay. This is not where our our treasure lies in this life. It it's really not. It's in the it's in the next life that we will gain all the reward and the treasure and the you know all the. This is our test. This is our. So we do lose loved ones. We we do uh, have terrible uh, terrible things that happen. Um, and, and so it's easy for a lot of people to say, well, the Lord's not there. He doesn't love me or, you know, I know people struggle with, with a lot of things, but what I'm getting to is overall in the grand scheme of things, this is not the end all be all of our lives. This, this life that we're living now, this is, this is merely a test. It's, it's, it's to stretch us and to teach us things and for us to experience things, to learn things. Yeah, no, I think that really is significant. And I know it, uh, hit me pretty hard right there because, uh, you know, with me, I guess, you know, because I just recently lost my mother. That's and, right. Um, yeah, that's it's right. Been, yeah, that's been a trial. I know, Marcus, right. you know, you've experienced that. Right. And, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of those things. Sometimes it feels like it's just absolutely way more, you know. I mean, I've had those moments where I've been like, Lord, I can't, Yeah. you know, I can't do this anymore. You know, they, absolutely. This is crazy. But, you know, we we have to rely on him. You, you have know, to have that and, faith. And then, and I, I've thought, too, about people who are older who who have who've experienced so much pain and so much loss and they have they have a a wisdom that yes. that I don't think could be gained in any other way absolutely you know there's so many older people I know who have who've went through so much and I can only imagine that you know it as hard as it is going through trials and losing people you love and having horrible things happen to you as you as you work through these trials and you you do get through them then you know you you grow and you you get tougher and you know so there's yeah there, there's older people i know that just it amazes me sometimes that, yep. i mean i've seen other people who have had you know tremendous loss and you know there's a lot of with it seems like it hits younger people harder yeah. because yeah you haven't built up that spiritual muscle to be able it's to true. get through those trials as well you know because they yeah. uh the older people have been through so much, they're like, yeah, this sucks, but you know, I got through this and this and this, and you know, we'll get through this. It's true. I think of that, uh, the analogy of the wind on the tree, you know, the wind makes it yeah. grow stronger. The, 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 you know, opposition it faces from the wind, but, and, and I do want to clarify that, you know, I mean, it, it is not, I'm not, I don't want to speak of it as if, Oh, if you'll just think this, everything's great. It, it, what I'm getting to is, is that we just have to try to maintain that, that mentality of it will be better one day. It really will. And, uh, it doesn't take away from the fact that we're still going to, we're still going to have some really tough days. Um, and, uh, and that's just, that's just the way it is. That's the way it is here. That's what, you know, but we're, we should be trying to learn all the time. I can't remember which apostle it was. He said, you know, always ask yourself, what am I to learn from this? You know, Lord, what are you trying to teach me right now? I I did it the other day. I did something. I was trying to, I I think I was working on, a vehicle or something i don't know but uh could not uh, figure something out and it tore up and i was just like oh my goodness and i just got so frustrated and i was like oh, i just wanted to take the part that i had and throw it in the yard you know yeah. but then i just said no <laughs> no 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 i was like i actually literally was talking out loud to i'm sure somebody thought i was a crazy person but i was just in the car by myself <laughs> i just sat back and said nope i said i said lord what do you want me to know right now what do, what do you need me to understand right now you know what i'm saying so it's it, i think that's just what we got to do sometimes look at that eternal perspective and it helps. It helps a lot. You know, that's that hope that Moroni spoke of, you know, to have that hope of a brighter day, 
you know. Did the Lord reach out and touch that part with his finger? And the vision, I, mean, he, I think he reached out and touched my head with his finger and it, you know, put some sit. Yeah, knocked you, you a little bit. Yeah, knocked, knocked me a little bit. Touched you with his said, hand. You need to. You need to calm down, son. What's up? You know. Yeah. But uh, but I got through that. So you know, very good. Going. Yeah, and that's what yeah Ether and Moroni are. Man, love it. Teaching us here. What y'all think about the New Jerusalem? Man, I heard about it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I think it's just cool, That's man, that it's, in, that it's in here, you know? So, so a couple of things. Um, it, uh, the New Jerusalem will be built here upon the, the American continent, right? right. And mm-hmm. uh, the place uh, was revealed to the prophet Joseph Smith in Doctrine and Covenant section 57, verses 1 through 3. Uh, so they're in, in Jackson County, Missouri, or in Independence, yeah. Missouri. Yeah. That's right. Going Jackson, what's that? Uh, what's yeah, that's a that's a uh, Johnny Cash. No, Johnny wait, Cash. Uh, June yeah. June Carter and Johnny June Cash. Carter, yeah, John, yeah. Johnny, yeah. But uh, anyway, the uh, there's a there's a reference. Uh, I'm actually reading a reading a book right now, "The Cleansing of America" by uh, Cleon Skousen. And uh, so he, he he talks a little bit about uh, about the the New Jerusalem and stuff, and it, it being oh, built yeah. and. And everything, but he actually mentions a uh, in 1890 a guy, uh, a Reverend Washington, who who was not a member of the church. Um, I was gonna read that uh, read that quote to you. It says uh, he says here upon these plains the problems of history are to be solved, and here if anywhere is to rise the city of God, the New Jerusalem, whose glories are to fill the earth. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, uh, that was pretty pretty interesting there. Yep. And um, here's another interesting fact. Uh, so the government surveyors have designated the center of the North American continent with a marker located approximately three miles east of uh, Junction City, Kansas, which is less than 150 miles west of the site of the New Jerusalem. Yep. And uh, hmm. so that, that, that was interesting. Yeah, the, the Lord gave a lot of revelation to John, uh, you know, John the Revelator, and right. he gave a lot of revelation about New Jerusalem to him, which we don't have. It, it's very uh, obscure a little bit because of how it's been retranslated and et cetera, and things taken out and added and whatever uh, to that to that. But we also have now this record of ether, which was chronologically f- far before John. Um, uh, and uh, but it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the the record we have from Ether, um, you know, talking about where it's going to be and right. I mean, I mean, I mean, not the exact. You know, we didn't yeah. receive that as you said until Joseph Smith received that revelation later. But but what I'm getting to is it talks about this this, this land. continent, That's this right, land. Yeah. You know, yeah. all this land and yeah. it's a promised land and basically it was set apart uh, to to do this. You know, to have this and to have the New Jerusalem and things. So it's pretty cool, man. The way I understand it is the New Jerusalem, the one that's in Missouri. Uh, will be one capital of the world as as far as uh, the the old Jerusalem that we know. Right. Uh, you know, it, it will be the other. Like there'll be sort of like two capitals of the world type thing. Right. You know, and and Christ will be uh, back and forth between those two places as he governs the world. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's that's pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah. That's that hope part of that hope we have and faith and all that that we look forward to. Absolutely. That's it. Reminds me of a joke. I don't know if I should say it right now. <laughs> say it. I can always edit. Go ahead and say it. We got it. <laughs> okay. We have it's, editing. Okay. This, the, the, uh, oh, my gosh. This cracks me up. So the, the, the joke that, uh, you know, the, the Pope one day is, you know, he's, he's, he's in Rome. He, he's, he's, so, yeah, one of, one of the, uh, the cardinals comes, comes into his chambers, and it's like, it's like you know, we, we, I have a message, a really important message, you know. And uh, he's like, well, what is it? What is it? He's like, okay, there's good news and there's bad news. He's like, well spit it out you know what is it what is it he's like okay what's the good news he's okay the good news is the savior has returned and he's on the phone right now and he wants to speak to you personally and the pope is like oh are you are you're you're joking he's like i promise this this is real this is true he's like so what's the bad news he's calling from salt lake city (laughs) 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 (laughs)
Okay. Holy cow, that's funny. Uh, we love our Catholic friends. Yeah, we, we're we, not. Yeah. This is all, you know, we do a lot of good it's stuff. A, it, it's it's, like, gotta, gotta it's put always all fun. The, my, gotta put all, all, all the my Catholic friends out. there. Yeah. It's for all the like, snowflakes. Come on. I mean, we're <laughs> just, we're, it's just a joke, people. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that's that, that's pretty good. I, I I'm actually uh, so President Nelson um, will be will be giving an address to the world on Friday. Y'all seen that right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, so I'm 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 uh, curious. I, you know, I don't I don't expect any any grand announcement. I think it's it's going to be it's going to be humble. It's going to be you know let's let's faith, get faith, faith, hope, faith charity, peace yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's. And that's what and that's what the prophets do. Um, he, he and he may he may actually throw out some some repentance in there, which is what Ether was doing, right? I, I think he probably will. You know, so Ether really uh, Ether was going about um, prophesying, and and they yep. kept they, they they started going after him, uh, attacking him, and he had to hide in the in the cavity of a rock. In the right? cavity of a rock, yeah. man. <laughs> you know. So now we're getting into that. Now we're getting into the we're getting into the Coriantumer and right. And all that good stuff, uh, and who, the, the who, battles. Who, who has who has nine lives? By the way, uh, he's like, he's never like, dies. The yeah, dude. Yeah, well, the Lord right. said he, he gets would. wounded all all the time, but but that, but that Joker will not die. He won't die. But um, <laughs> Catty Antimer. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's a cat. Um, so um, okay. Um, in, in verse twenty one um, of thirteen. Of thirteen, okay. Uh, I love the fact, and this is this is what we're talking about here. It's, it's funny you brought this up. It says otherwise, and this is this is this is Ether speaking to Coriantumer. You know, the Lord says, Ether, go to Coriantumer and tell him this, and he tells him like, Hey, y'all stop fighting. The Lord will actually give you the help you maintain your kingdom. And I mean, it was all like handed yeah, on a here, silver here tray. Is. You know, all you got to do is repent and turn to the Lord. But anyway, so he tells him, he says, and um, let's see, uh, he basically says that he would not die, um, let's see, uh, in these battles, um, save it were himself. Basically, all his household would die, save it were himself, and he should only live to see the fulfilling of the prophecies which had been spoken concerning another people receiving the land. The other people is basically we know of. Uh, I guess it would be like the the Mulekites and the the Nephites that were coming in later on in his life. I mean. Coriantumer's yes. life, uh, uh, you know, coming from from there, yeah, and the then it says, Zerahimla. "People, Zerahimla. yeah, the people, Zerahimla, Zerahimla, all those people." Uh, the, the so he would see them come in, receiving the land for their inheritance. In other words, y'all, y'all screwed up, you know. And uh, and then it says uh, that Coriantumer re- would receive a burial by them because he'd be living among them. He'd be the last mm-hmm. one, and um, and every show, soul should be destroyed to save it. Were Coriantumer, so like you say, he's got these nine lives, you know, basically the Lord's allowing him to live as a testimony to him if he doesn't follow him and all that. So my thing is this, it sounds like if he had complied with the prophet and said, okay, let's do this. I'm going to repent. We're going to turn over. We're going to this and that, whatever, and, and turn our lives around. I feel like the Lord very probably, you know, it's very probable that he could have said, okay, we don't really have to have Lehi and Nephi come in because these people could have taken it on and continued on with it. You know, I, I don't know. Cause he's kind of telling him, if you don't, I'm going to bring in some more people. Right. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's very interesting. Very possible. So that, absolutely. Throw out. So we, we may have never, because of Coriantumer's decision, we may have never had a Nephi. Uh, you know what I mean? That we know yeah. of. That that's we right. would have known. I yeah. don't know. That's just, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, but, um, you know, very interesting. So, yeah, that, I, I like that. So that's a that's the principle of, of always having a contingency plan, right? A, a plan. A, Absolutely, the Lord's know, got some backup plans. I'm that's telling right. you. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the and, and he what knows our weakness. That's right. <laughs> what you referenced, Marcus, about Coriantumer being discovered by the people of Zarahemla. That's actually in Omni 121. Yes. Yes. Where, where, where it's mentioned and then he he, he uh, resides with them for nine moons and then he's yeah. and he dies and, and is buried by, by the yep. people fulfilling that prophecy. Yep. So that, that's a, uh, that's, it's, it's, it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, obviously everything happened and, you know, we go on to see a little bit more about him here. Um, you know, what he, what he does and, and things, but, uh, it, it's, it's a very tragic story nonetheless, uh, as we go. So. I'll, uh, I'll mention in, at the end of, at the end of 13, <laughs> this is a, a final battle takes place between, uh, yes. between the, Sher- the yeah, Sherrod and, uh, and Coriantumer. Yes. Uh, and it lasts for three days. 
right. and it kind of goes back and back and forth. And then uh, Corantumer, he slays uh, Shared or Shared, however, however you say his name, yeah. um, but 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 he gashes him across across the thigh. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then uh, wounded and the court, him his thigh. That's, right. <laughs> that's all he got. He's doing. <laughs> and so he doesn't he doesn't go to battle for for two years. Right. But, but during that time, it basically become. I mean, all I mean, all heck breaks loose. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I mean, everybody's absolutely. walking around with their hand on the sword. You know, looking around. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, absolutely. they they, yeah. they put their stuff up on the mantle at night. They come. They wake up in the morning. and It's gone. Yeah. And I mean, that, what a, what a weird curse, but what a, what a fitting curse for people that are, that are so focused on material things. Have right, you ever thought of that? I right, mean, these people are not focused on spiritual things. They're focused on material things, whether it be their sword, their gold, their silver, their possessions. And so the Lord's like, okay, here's something, you know, everything that you hold dear, it's just going to disappear, dude. Uh, you're going to set it right here and you're going to turn around and look back again. It's going to be gone. And it's like, how does that make you? I mean, if you're going to put all your time and energy into that, I'll take it out of your way. I'll remove that distraction. You know what I'm saying? So I, it's a very right. fitting curse for the, for the time. And this is not the first time it's happened in the book of Mormon. Later on, we find out it happens other times as well. We, we read about it. Things become slippery. You know, they can't hold on to them. Right. But um, Corey, Corey, this Cory Antimer dude, he, he knows war. I think, I think a Captain Moroni type, obviously. Right opposite as far as spirituality but it sounds like he's a very yeah. war uh what's it called what a, a battle worn he's, uh, he's a person. war historian he knows yes he knows, he knows the best ways to, to 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 utilize his armies and everything and he know, and he studies it says he studied mm-hmm. himself right. in all the arts of war and the cunning of war and and it made me think you know he devoted all this great a great deal of time to studying war and, and yet uh when ether comes up with a simple message mm-hmm. You know, he, 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 he just throws it out the window like it's nothing. And uh, to me, it makes me think about secular knowledge. There's nothing wrong with secular knowledge. We should, we should gain secular knowledge and learn things of the world and, and, you know, all these wonderful things we can study. But if we don't study the gospel as much or more, it will be for naught. There will be no reason for any of that. And, and so we have Corey Antimer. It's great that he studied the arts of war and all these great, wonderful things. I mean, I think Captain Moroni did too. I think he knew a lot of good stuff, right. but yet he put Christ in his life first and he studied the gospel too. He knew the gospel inside and out, which made the difference of those two. So let's don't just focus on just secular stuff. We should always study the gospel as much or more than the secular world type stuff and we'll be better off. But going into 14, as we're going into 14 here, like you said, everything's becoming slippery. Everybody's yep. on, you know, so yeah, so, so so Corey Antimer, he he uh, he had a bunch of rivals, but none of them were to the likes of Shiz. So yeah, she, oh uh, him, Shiz, he, him and Shiz. That's, wh- <laughs> go, go. <laughs> That's where that came from. No, was yeah, right. when, it, oh, when, it, when he hits the fan. Shiz. Yeah, the Shiz yeah. has hit the, shiz fan. hit the fan. <laughs> this is when sh- this is when the Shiz hit the sword. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right, That's right. So, so <laughs> in, in, four, in fourteen uh, verses seventeen and eighteen, and then and then twenty two, um, it talks about how he he pursued after Coriantumer, how uh, he would go about killing men, women, and children, and yeah. then after he would do that, he would burn the city to the ground. Wow, uh, which is, I mean, which is horrific. I mean, he was no no mercy was no mercy was, was his plan, and and a lot of it was because he was he was he had swore to to uh, avenge the death of his brother. Right. That's, right. So that's what, that's what a lot of that is, is about. All he wants to do is kill Corey Antimer. Right. That's it. That's what that's right. he wants to do. So we learn in second Nephi uh, chapter two, as well as in the temple, um, that everything has its opposite, right? So light versus mm-hmm. darkness, health versus sickness, right. Um, uh, life versus death. And if you apply it to like today, there's, there's birth versus abortion. Right. That's, yeah. that's the opposite. Yeah. Humility versus pride and so forth. And um, one of the one of the uh, one of the differences or another difference is you've got a Zion society and a divided society. Right. And so and that's what ultimately that's what the Lord wants his people to establish. Right. Is, is a Zion society. And in Moses 7, 18, it says, and the Lord called his people Zion because they were of one heart and uh in one mind and so uh what satan wants is the exact opposite of a zion society which is a which is a divided society okay 
and it and it speaks here where where things got so bad that basically people were flocking to two two groups the armies of Coriantumr and the armies of Shias. Yeah. And so they 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 were they were they were divided, right? Um and it makes me think of really what we're what we're seeing today. Okay. Yeah. You've got you've got your your Trump supporters. Okay. And, yeah. and I'm not going to get into who's right and who's wrong and all that, but you really have a lot of this going on yeah, on smaller absolutely. scales. You've got your Trump supporters and you've got your Biden supporters, right? right. And we've we've literally seen people flocking together in the streets as it, oh, yeah, as, it, as, it, as it mentioned here, use the word flocking, uh, mm. flocking together in the streets, having large crowds, spitting upon each other, throwing projectiles yeah. all the way down to people have been killed. Yeah. And so it's, it's crazy. And, and Satan is sitting back enjoying loving it, it loving it. Yeah. That's, that's what he wants. He wants yeah, a divided absolutely. society. Yeah. He's and winning. That's he's right. Winning. He's, he, yeah. Exactly. So, it, it just it, reading reading all this and and the the struggle for power and what they did it just made me think of 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 what we're going through what we're going it, through now it makes me think too that that you know the wars you know it wasn't the wars or the imminent enemies that caused all this destruction the thing it was their own unrighteousness i mean that's what caused all this yeah that's where the root of this problem is unrighteousness just like you're saying jackson satan's winning it don't matter if you're, you know, this supporter or that supporter, man, it's all divided up. Everybody's hateful. Everybody's mean. That's right. Satan's winning, man. Satan's that's winning, a, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that's, that's, that's his game, you know? Contention is of the devil, right? Absolutely. The spirit of contention is not of me is what the Lord says. Absolutely. Um, you know, if they'd been, if they'd been righteous, man, that, you know, they, like I say, it could have been a whole different thing, man, for Coriantumr and his people, which we do oh, see yeah. later that Coriantumr does start to see the light a little too late. I mean, you, you hate to talk about too late. It's too late to repent or this. It's not really. It's it's never too late to repent. But, boys, there could be some good time saved there and some good things could have, you know, a lot of bad things could have been avoided. But um, it, it was a little too late for Corey Antimer at this point. I mean, he'd already, he, and it's not like he only had one chance to repent. I mean, it was over and over and over and well, he could have done it. And, and also, years, you know? and also he's, he's not really repenting because he's sorrowful to the Lord. I think he's repenting right. because of what has happened. Yeah. He's, he's, he's yeah. sorry. He's sorry. Losing that his, his kingdom, people losing his people. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It, et cetera. Yeah. So, so, and then we see here, and here's one of the first times we see where, you know, another time where Corey Antimer has deep wounds and he's losing blood and he faints yeah. and he's carried away as though he were dead. Yeah. Let me, going off of what you said earlier, Jackson, about uh, Moroni having weakness, I wonder if Ether doubted a little here because the Lord told him, the Lord told Ether, Corey Antimer will not die. He will outlive everybody and this. And so when Ether's there in his rock, let's, and, and by the way, Ether's living under a rock right now, literally. But yeah, he knows everything. He, he knows yeah. because he's a prophet. You know, we have that saying, oh, you're, what are you? You've been living under a rock? You don't know what's going on. Uh, he knows everything going <laughs> he's on. He's literally been living under a rock. He's literally been living under a rock, but yeah, he sees everything because he's the prophet. But um, so I wonder if he doubted right here whenever he looked out on the battlefield and saw, oh my goodness, they, they're hauling off Corey Antrimer. He died. You know, I thought you said, Lord, that he was going to continue to live. What's up? You know, I mean, I wonder if he, I doubt he doubted, you know, because he's a prophet, but he could have. You never know. This goes back to that Moroni thing. Did he, yeah. did he doubt? Say. You know, but he is human. Sure. I'm sure he could have. But uh, that happened several times. So each time you have to ask yourself, did he doubt here? Because he just died again, <laughs> basically. So. And you think that people would. Because one thing that's hard to read is because it mentions millions in chapter 15. Millions, Dude. millions of people yeah. have Two died. Millions. In, Two millions of yeah. his people ha, ha, have died in battle. And you think at some point people's going to be like, all right, dude, listen, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we don't have to fight to the death until it would, we completely wipe each other out. So you'd think so. Yeah, you'd, you'd think, think that so. at some point they'd say, okay, enough is enough, but no. Yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, I so, mean, it, every, every U S war that's ever happened on the, in the United States is, has, hasn't been, I don't even know if it's reached 600,000 casualties. That's the civil war and everything. I looked it up the other day. I don't think we, and two millions of people. Have hold, on, hold, 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 hold on. Say, say it, it again, Marcus. Every, every war that every U S war, like everything that the U S when I'm talking about U S I'm talking about after we became the United States, right. that fought a war, every war that we fought in as far as our casualties go, 
has only reached, I don't even think it's reached up to 600,000 people. And that's including the civil war because the civil war had uh, on the union side, 140,000 and on the, and on the Confederacy side, 74,000. Wow. So that's only huh. a little over 200,000 there. And the world war two was the biggest with 293,000. And then the other ones were like uh, the war of 1812 revolutionary war, Korean war, world war one, you know, that's another hundred thousand with all those combined. So it's, it, yeah. it's crazy to think 2 million right. people. And this is, you know, it's, it's unreal to think that. And there's been other wars in history, world history way back where there's been like 40 million people like the, the, the um, China, China and whatever. Anyway, you have to go way back. But anyway, I, was, I looked up a lot of that stuff cause I thought it was very interesting that that many people had died. I was like, Whoa, wow. that's a lot of people. Yeah. So, uh, in reading, in reading of uh, using David, David Bridges, not Bridges, <laughs> David, David Bridges, Bridges. That's right. Bridges. <laughs> da- David Bridges. So he, David he, he talks about, uh, he talks about this, you know, trying to really comprehend people fighting until they actually absolutely destroy a whole civilization. Yeah. He said, he said, it's actually very common, especially back in, uh, in Asia and everything in the history of war. Uh, when you have when you have two kings and their and their armies are fighting each other, the sole purpose of the army is to protect their king. Yeah, and and they will keep fighting until either the king is is dead or or captive. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and in this case, neither, neither happened, you know, neither one was, was, was taken cat from the other and then neither one of them mm-hmm. died. And so they continued to fight and fight and fight. And he says, it's actually, it's, it's actually kind of where the, the origins of the game of chess comes yeah. from, right? So yeah. everybody is dispensable, but once you, once you get your, the, the, the opponent's king in check, right. it's checkmate. Right. So, you actually don't yeah. kill the king. That's right. You get him in checkmate. Yeah. Right. So forth. So. And we saw a bunch of that up to that point, you know, with all the, you know, going back to the, the brother Jared, after the brother Jared days, all the capture of the king, keep him in, you know, they he kept held him, him in forever. captivity. That's yeah, right. The, yep. And so, but now we're getting down to where they're just drunk with anger and drunk with evil. And they're just like, we're killing everybody. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> and so they're, it's all that's out the window now. It doesn't matter. Kill the kings, kill the whoever, kill the kids, right. kill the man. They're arming children and women. And it, could you imagine? Can I can't even fathom like putting armor on a kid, say an eight year old kid. Here, come on, little girl, put your <laughs> yes. pick your sword up and let's go stab yeah. somebody through the chest. I mean, I know, man. What what do you, what do you what is going on? It's unreal. I mean, what do you say to those kids like when you're arming them up? get ready for this. It's, it's a trip. I mean, I don't know. What do you say? It's probably sad, man. It's just a... <laughs> but Satan has completely won here, man. It's like, it's over. For well, co- yeah, I mean, co- co- well, yeah, the thing is it escalated to the point where it, that's when, when you, when forgiveness and, and grace and, and faith in the Lord is taken out of the picture, you know, you have yeah. a situation where every time they go into battle, they're like, Oh my gosh, those blankety blanks killed yeah. my uncle. Yeah. I'm going to kill all of their family and then you go into battle right. and then you know my gosh this time they killed my father and my yeah. brother and this person yeah i want to hit him even harder next time and it's like just it goes back and forth and escalates and just keeps escalating and so there's no there's no end because every time they go to the battle you I mean you think every single time they battled against each other they lost close friends and family members yeah. and probably people they loved and cared about that were killed in these battles and rather than saying okay we just need to stop you know it just escalated Every time I can imagine this going back and you know back and forth and just just the positive feedback loop of every time they go to battle more people are killed and every yeah. time more people are killed they become more angry and they be more just ready to kill them and so just yeah this is that whole process going absolutely out of control and and it's very cool that they use the word drunken with anger and with evil basically it, yeah. because a drunk person we know can't control himself you know you you, you're not in control of the things you would do you're not rational and you got to think man it makes no sense the details of these final battles this is john by the way said the details of these final battles make little sense he said with so much land available why not leave your weapons and find a new start he said especially when you're only 32 and 27 there's 32 of of uh, I think Shiz and and 27 of Coriantumers. Right. At this point, got uh, hey, you know what? This is dumb, guys. Let's <laughs> let's roll back and uh, and let's just go plow a field over here and plant some corn. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this yeah. is dumb. What are we doing? I mean, 
w- yeah, what's throw, left? Throw throw those uh, war traditions out the window. Yeah, like, All right, I mean we're, we're good. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's just it's it's crazy. But being drunk was a very yeah. proper way to describe it. They are they're drunk. Yeah. They're just they're irrational. You know. As we get ready to close it out, um, like to point out a pretty gruesome detail here. Yes, this is this is <laughs> this is always stuck out to me since youth, man. <laughs> Verse verse 31 of chapter 15, and it came to pass that, uh, actually I'll start in 30, and it came to pass that when Coriantumr had leaned upon his sword, that he rested a little, he smote off the head of Shiz. Uh, and it came to pass that after he had smitten off the head of Shiz, that Shiz raised up on his hands, okay, he did a push-up, and fell. And after that, he had struggled for breath, and he died. I mean, it's that's a little vivid. Man. That's gory right there, man. I mean, that's as vivid as it, vivid yeah. as it gets right there, man. That's like. But but then right after that, Coriantumr falls to the earth and passes out as, as yeah. if he had no life. And so here's Ether again, probably going, wait a minute, was that it? I mean, is he <laughs> is he dead now? I thought he wasn't supposed to die, you know, over and over. Yeah. That, that had to be a, a gruesome thing. I mean, that gives a little insight, just a little insight. <laughs> of how gruesome this is i mean how how awful this was yeah and 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 i will say this it's a it's a fairly long little thing here so i'm not going to read it all but there is an article by a uh a neuropathologist dr m gary hadfield uh for whoever wants to go find that article and he's an lds uh he's a member of the church uh and uh he just goes on to talk about how a lot of Book of Mormon critics have laughed about that absurd account about how a body would push itself back up. But as a neuropathologist, he talks about the spinal cord and, mm. and the way it's hit and that all these things made sense to him. And he said, I'll just say what he said at the very end. He said, the, this fascinating evidence must confound even the most jaded and skeptical Book of Mormon critic. Why? Because it, in a single sentence, Ether has captured not only one, but two major reflex actions met, uh, mediated by the brainstem. So if this were the only sentence in the Book of Mormon, it would provide ample proof that the book was true. Huh. For neither Ether, the author, nor Mormon, the abridger, nor Joseph Smith, the translator, knew anything about the brainstem or its physiology. And, and so it, it's a very good article. Um, wow. Dr. M. Gary Hadfield. Um, that talks about this particular event saying that it, it just blew him away when he read it. And, uh, you know, he was like, wow, this makes total sense. What's happening. It's exactly what would happen. And so he was saying, nobody would have knew, nobody would have wrote that. If Joseph right. Smith was making up a story, I would have never, right. I'd be like, that's the dumbest thing. That's really far fetched. There's no way right. that happens. Yeah. And so he, he goes on to explain the things that happens to the body and everything. It was very interesting, but I, I thought that it kind of blew me away. That little article there. It's pretty cool. That is neat. Well, yeah, well, yeah well, well, definitely. Well, in certain animals, you know, like the, the people talk about, you know, running around like a chicken with its head cut head off. off. And I mean, I've will. seen that before, too. If you or snake. chop a chicken's head off, a snake it'll, it'll run that. around. It'll run yep. around and flap its wings and just, yep. you know, all the nerves are just firing. You know, those last uh, neural firings there. So the, the, the last thing I'll say is the very last verse. I mean, he says, whether the Lord, this is ether. These are the words of ether. This is Moroni writing this. He said, whether the Lord will that I be translated or that I suffer uh, the will of the Lord in the flesh, it matters not if, if it so be that I'm saved in the kingdom of God. And uh, this sounds like Moroni. Mm-hmm. Does it not sound like Moroni? I mean, this yeah. is, I, I guarantee you Moroni felt a close connection to ether. I bet he felt a very kindred spirit with ether because they went through both of them's in a, in a cave. Let's just be honest. Probably, right. you know, Moroni is <laughs> probably in a cave. He's been in a cave, yeah. but we know that. And, and here they are and they've got these records. They've got the, it's very similar. Very, and they're watching the destruction of their people from a high point somewhere. Right. It, it, it's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy. So very close connection there. Definitely. Well, very good. Um, that's the conclusion of the book of ether. Um, and so next week we'll jump back on track and we will begin to close this Moroni. year out with, with the book of Moroni and, uh, see what he has to, has to say and, and share with us. So that's right. Y'all keep studying the book of Mormon. Y'all keep on subscribing and until next time y'all keep on striving. striving.